I understand Jesus as a pre-existent spirit son of God, as one of the sons of God, in fact, the son of God, but certainly one of the sons of God mentioned in Genesis 6, Deuteronomy 32 in the Dead Sea Scrolls, the book of Job, and in Proverbs 30, in verses 4 and 5, texts that refer to ascending and descending, referring explicitly to God and his name, and in the Hebrew, the name of his son. Now, in the Greek, it says name of his sons. Either way, this idea of sonship, which I believe Jesus builds upon in his response to the Jews in John 10, is something very clearly taught in the Bible. When we see angels, for example, these sons of God in the Old Testament, taking on human form. So that's not what I believe the Bible teaches about Jesus. When angels took human form in the Old Testament, we're not told exactly you know, how they do that or the mechanics that are involved in the metaphysical to physical transfer, but they do it. It's explicit that they appear as humans, they eat, and then they can dematerialize or however you want to describe it but they're not born as a human being right in the new testament i believe it teaches that jesus actually existed as a spirit son of god as in the form of a god or god philippians 2 we can talk about more in a minute but just to define the view so it's clear what i'm saying is possible right you want to know how is this possible well first let me explain what i believe is possible or happened so you had a spirit son of god like the angels they can take human form. But in this case, one of those sons of God, the son of God, completely destroys himself. That's what the verb kanao means in Philippians 2. Existing in the form of a god or god and destroyed himself and took on the form of a man. When he was born through Mary, I believe he literally was created as a human being. So, for example, he didn't know who he was when he was an infant. He didn't know who he was until he got a little older. That's why Philippians 2 says, 2, 7, and 8, when he realized he was in the form of a man, he became obedient as far as that. It, it uses the verb irisco. That means find out. It's very anti-Trinitarian because they believe he was always God, never stopped being God. But if you have to find out, if you have to realize you're a man, then at some point you didn't know that. Of course, they had the whole dual nature thing, but either way. So I believe he completely died, not died, right? So he didn't die in the sense that he was killed as a spirit. Philippians 2 says he emptied himself, pale too. It, the reflexive personal pronoun that means that's the object of the empty, himself. So he destroyed himself and was born as a man and lived as a man. And as a man, the body that God prepared and that he helped prepare to prepare him for this, that'd be the last Adam sacrifice in our view. So when he was destroyed and became born as a man, he didn't realize who he was until later. Exactly when that was is debatable. But Philippians 2 says when he found out, when he realized he was in the appearance of a man, he decided to be obedient. He didn't rebel. He didn't take advantage of it. Now, Socinians want to say, well, that's, that's what that means. But that's after he emptied himself of being in the form of a god which they take as like this functional divine royalty as a man. But if that's the case, then why would he have to take the form of a man or become a man? They focus on slave there, but it says a man also. But if he was already a man and just functionally God, why would it then have to say he's, he becomes a man, just say he becomes a slave? So it's very important that Socinians and others understand that the Bible teaches Jesus was destroyed as a spirit. He did it to himself and then born as a man. Same person. And again, how that actually works, right? So there's not like two persons like Trinitarians think. Some Socinians seem to think there's like not enough room in a human to have this pre-existent person. Well, he didn't even realize who he was until later. He's literally a man, perfect, sinless because of God and the line he prepared through to Mary. So this whole purpose was spoken about in Eden in response to Satan. So it seems like, well, that's, yeah, right. It's all for, for ordaining stuff. But the same Socinians will admit there's a difference, a huge difference between foreordaining and pre-existing. So yes, when it's talking about things that will happen in the future, that's foreordination. But when it's talking about existing in a certain state and then taking on another state, there's no foreordination there. There's just existential 
ID is being expressed. That's how I believe it was possible. He literally destroyed himself in the spirit and was born through Mary because of God as man. Then when he died as a man, he was completely dead in the spirit and in the flesh. That's why Galatians 1, 1 says the father raised him up from the dead. But he says in John 2, 19 through 21, break down this temple and in three days, I will raise it up, referring to his body. So he died and trusted his spirit to the father and the father resurrected him and gave him a new body in which state first Peter three says he went and preached to other spirits. I don't see a problem. I just see these different existences that the firstborn son of God uniquely takes and or is given in the case of, of the resurrection. It's not a question of being possible or impossible. It's what he chose to do. It's what God made happen. And he did it. In case you did not quite catch it, Jesus was a pre-existent spirit son of God or one of the sons of God, he said. And that's, uh, he gave examples in Genesis 6, talks about the sons of God cohabiting or having relations with human women. Job chapter 1, where you have the scene of the sons of God in heaven, and among them uh, shows up uh, Satan, the devil. And as the son of God, so he's one of the sons of God, and he's also the son of God, the unique son of God. And then Greg gave there a proof text to that, uh, Proverbs 30, verse 4 and 5, just to rebut the uh, Proverbs 30 and show you something interesting about that. If you go to one of our websites, thehumanjesus.org, there's a list we created called the Traditional Trinitarian Texts, and we give a, our explanations, our view, or alternative readings. If you look down here, just scroll down about Proverbs 30. So the verse reads this way using the NASB, NASB, who has ascended into heaven and descended, who has gathered the wind in his fists, who has wrapped the waters in his garment, who has established all the ends of the earth, what is his name or his son's name? Surely you know. Even Trinitarian publications like the ESV Study Bible do not identified the son there as Jesus. Uh, we have a quote there, the Christian reader naturally thinks of the son of God, but the purpose of the words here is simply to say that no mere human being, whether father or son, has done these things, and that God is the Holy One, as it says in the previous verse 3, whose ways are high and exalted, infinitely greater than the understanding of men. So the verse is simply a contrast with God Almighty, the Holy One, with humans. And, and it has nothing to do with a pre-existent son, as Greg is alleging here. But let's go on to what else he said. Now, this is the most interesting thing. He believes Jesus completely destroyed himself. So that's the way Greg is translating that, that Greek word, kenoo, using the modern Greek pronunciation in Philippians 2, 7. And he realized or found out, says Greg, that he was in the form of a man, translating another Greek word there. Greg is really going out on a limb here because I have never come upon this type of interpretation for these words in these passages. So if you look at, again, any standard modern translation, who do have a Trinitarian bias towards this passage. For example, the NIV has in verse 6, Jesus was in very nature God. That's not what the Greek text says. The Greek simply says he was in the form of God. And the subject in this passage is the human Jesus, as verse 5 says. But Greg is translating the Greek word there, usually translated emptied in verse 7, as you can see there, but emptied himself, taking the form of a bond servant, made in the likeness of men. So Greg is translating that Greek word as destroyed. And he points to one of the definitions of the Greek word kenoo, uh, which can be used uh, to mean destroyed. But obviously the context will tell you what the meaning of a word means. I mean, invariably words have different meanings. Uh, here's a good example. In English, if I were to say, I'm shot, S-H-O-T, shot, you might think, oh, no, you, someone shot you with a gun. Or you could mean, 
as an euphemism or a English idiom, I'm shot as in I'm done, I'm, I'm tired, you know? So the word shot can have different meanings or even different definitions if you look it up. So Greg is quite a, I mean, I was amazed when I heard him uh, say this and he said it a few times, uh, Jesus completely died yet not died in the sense of killed in the spirit. He emptied himself and then he says, but that means he destroyed himself and was born as a man and lived as a man in the body God prepared for him. It's very important for Socinians, uh, he means people like me, I guess, although I don't share everything Socinians believed. And by Socinians, Greg Stafford is uh, pointing to the, the movement that began in the 16th, 17th century Europe, uh, started by the Socini uh, uncle and nephew couple from Italy and the so-called Polish Brethren. But we do not, uh, at least Restoration Fellowship, the ministry I work for, we do not uh, hold to everything Socinian. For example, we differ on the virgin birth. I, I believe many Socinians did deny the virgin birth. And also on the topic to do with the atonement, they have different understandings of that. So, so it's very important nonetheless that they understand the Bible teaches Jesus was destroyed as a spirit. He did it to himself, then born as a man, same person. And again, he said this maybe four or five times. Jesus literally destroyed himself in the spirit and was born through Mary because of God. So somehow because of God, I, I guess he means the father, preexistent spirit son is born through Mary as a man. Then when he died as a man, he was completely dead in the spirit and in the flesh. When he was born through Mary, he was literally created as a man. I don't see a problem. I just see these different existences. Now what's telling here is that the, the one we know as Jesus had a previous existence where he basically killed himself. Uh, this is like someone said to me, it sounds like suicide by birth. He commits self-destruction, which sounds like suicide. So what was born through Mary? If, if there's total destruction of this spirit son individual, why would you use the word through in reference to the birth of Jesus? of Jesus then. There's nothing to go through, you know what I mean? I mean, I wish I, I could, uh, I have asked uh, Greg in the past to, to uh, debate me, have a discussion, but he has not uh, even replied. So yes, uh, he kept saying born through Mary, created as a man, but there's really no spirit son individual there. But he kept saying that this Jesus killed himself, destroyed himself. And then he said that these are just different existences. That's plural, uh, more than one existence. Now, how anyone can have two beginnings, two origins uh, is beyond me because Obviously, Matthew 1.1, 1, 1, Matthew 1.18, he describes Matthew there, the origin, genesis of the Son of God. Your translation might read genealogy or the birth, but the Greek there is literally genesis, which is the beginning, the origin. Let's see, and, and I just want to again uh, emphasize, according to Greg Stafford, his reading of Philippians 2 verses 7-8, Jesus destroyed himself, so this pre-existent spirit son killed himself and then found out or realized he was in the form of a man. That's what Paul is saying to Greg Stafford in Philippians 2, verses 7 and 8. 